Okay, so here's the long awaited. Let's see, maybe this way. The long awaited lecture on, <clears throat> well, the remainder of the lecture on this example problem, the fluids problem. Um, in class, we got this linear graph, a normal tree as you will recall from just a, a moment ago in this video. But we still had a lot to go. Um, it's kind of all could be automated at this point, but uh, we'll just march ahead and do our thing. So the first step is to find the variable. So there's the um, primary, secondary variables. We're actually going to skip all the way to the state variables here because we're that good. Um, we want for our state variables we want uh, across variables on a type energy storage elements which are the two fluid capacitors in this case so the across variable being pressure so pc1 pc2 q oh well so those are that and then we also want the three variables on t types in the links not in the normal tree so this is QI1, QI2. System order then is just equal to the number of state variables, or four. Um, we could define our state vector somewhere. Maybe I'll define it over here. X equals, remember this is a vector valued function, but we often just say state vector so QI1 and QI2. Excellent. So now that we have our state vector and our system order, we're ready to do our three different types of equations, our elemental equations, our continuity equations, and our compatibility equations. So the elemental equations need to be written for each passive element in this system. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven passive elements. We're going to have seven elemental equations, and I like to write this column here. So we're going to go C1, C2, um, I1, I2. I often list the energy storage elements first, but that's not necessary. R1, R2, and R3. And then it's important that this line be gray. Then we have the uh, time derivative. I'm going to use the dot notation in this problem. So PC1 dot, time derivative of PC1. The elemental equation for every fluid capacitor is 1 over C1. Well, every linear fluid capacitor, ideal fluid capacitor, we called them has this equation, so PC2 has a very similar expression. And I1 has QI1 dot equals, so every, every uh, fluid inertance has this relationship, one over I1 times P1 and similarly with I2, 1 over I2, P2, uh, PI2. This is an I1. Good. And then just the resistances, which are pretty straightforward. PR1 equals R1 times QR1. And PR2 equals R2, QR2. If you're confused about where these equations are coming from, I would uh, tell you to review the notes that we went over on fluid modeling, which has these equations for, con uh, for capacitors, inductors, and resistors for fluid analogs of them. And that is, that rounds out our elemental equations. So our continuity equations are next up. 
we can write those by drawing these contours on our linear graph. And I'll use, I don't know, purple. Kind of like purple for this. So uh, we need to draw a contour that's going to intersect one and only one passive element in the normal tree. So there is one. So these are kind of like the node equations. There's another. There's another, there's another. And then finally, we can do one more like this, which might be a little tricky to see. Um, that's, you could also close it this way too if you want to, but this is the easier way to go. Okay, so let's write our equations for this. So for, um, the this node here or this contour we say that everything going into it must equal everything going out of it qc1 is leaving it and so it must be equal to everything going in which q1 goes in and qi1 goes out so we would subtract that and we have Q, uh, the R1, that's the next one I wrote down. So that's this one here. We've got QR1 is equal to QI1. Pretty easy to see that. Everything that goes into this node has to come out. Similarly, um, with QR2, it must be equal to QI2. And uh, let's see, the next one I wrote down was QC2, so this one. So QC2 must be equal to whatever goes in, so Q2 minus QI2. So Q2 minus QI2. And QR3. equals so that's this big node here the, the big contour so everything that goes into it which is qi2 and qi1 has to equal what's coming out which is qr3 so this is just qi1 plus qi2 good compatibility equations um, we write one for each passive element that we can place back into the normal tree or into the normal tree. Of course, it's not actually in the normal tree, but we can place it into a graph consisting of our normal tree and that one link that we place in. In this case, we only have two possibilities, I2 and I1, so these two fluid inductors. So, in this case, we have that um, we place this in, so PI1 has to be equal to PC1 minus PR3 minus PR1. So I'll write that. So PI1 is equal to um, PC1 minus PR3, so PC1 minus PR3 minus PR2. Okay. And our other one is very similar, it's just on the other side of this loop. So it's PI2 equals PC2 minus PR3 minus PR2. Uh, sorry, this this was an R1 in the last equation, wasn't it? I'm sure I'll have already caught that. R1. Good. Uh, so this one was PI2 equals PC1 to get to ground minus PR3 to get up to that center node minus PR2 to get to the end of the PI2 node.
very good. And finally, we just have the state equations, which of course we know are just written as x dot equals ax plus bu. We're just reminding ourselves of that. So let, the algebra is pretty straightforward here. So I'm just going to sort of move quickly in it. Um, I1 and I2. And all right. So we have from the elemental equation PC1 dot equals 1 over C1 times QC1. However, we now have a uh, continuity equation for that. So QC1 is just Q1 minus QI2. Using uh, QI1, wasn't it? Once again, I'm sure you caught that. Good. Uh, and guess what, guys? This is actually a. Uh, so this is an input, Q1, and QI1 is a state variable, so we're done with that one. And similarly, PC2 dot is equal to 1 over C2, Q2 minus QI2. Okay using that same relationship, um, but for QC2. So that was this one here. So QC2 is equal to Q2 minus QI2. And it's already in state variables and input variables, so we don't need to do anything else to it. <coughs> Similarly with I1, so QI1 dot equals 1 over i1 over p i1 is which we have a compatibility equation for p c1 so it's this equation here so I'll check it while we're up here so this one so it's p c1 minus p r3 minus p r1 and that's not in terms of state variables but I'll write the second one first, and then we'll do the substitutions, which are pretty straightforward. So um, this is times pi2, which is equal to from here, well, you're using this one here, which is equal to pc1, or sorry, yeah, PC, PC, pc2. Uh -huh. Another typo, you guys. You guys are always keeping me honest in class. So PC2 minus PR3 minus PR2. Okay, so um, very good. Now this PR3, PR1, and PR2, this is the part of the algebra that we can do kind of like offline here. So if you look down here, you see they're all pressures of R1, R2, and R3 we need to get rid of. Pressures of R1, R2, and R3 are here, right? We can eliminate those using the usual method of plugging in from the continuity equations, right? So QR1 is equal to QI1, QR2 is equal to QI2, and QR3 is equal to the sum of those two. And those Qs happen to all be state variables. QI1 and QI2. So we're using these, all of these in this step here. And we see that it's in fact quite easy to write these last statements down. 1 over I1, PC1, don't need to get rid of that, that's a state variable, right? Minus PR3. So PR3 up here is equal to R3 QR3, which is equal to I1, or QI1 plus QI2. So that is just equal to R3 times QI1 plus QI2. And um, we have minus PR1 
which is equal to R1, QR1, which is equal to QI2. So plus or minus R1, QI1. Okay. And we have all state variables and actually no inputs in this equation, just inputs in these equations. The inputs flow into the tanks, so that makes sense. And uh, so this one's good. And so we can write similarly for this next equation. It's essentially the same. PC2 minus R3 QI1 plus QI2 minus R2, I think it is. Yeah, R2 QI2. Oh, and I forgot my closing parenthesis there. So um, yeah, so we just used, let's see, we just used uh, the same equation for QR3 and a different equation, but was very analogous for QR2 or PR2, I should say, and uh, PR3. Good. So we have here our state equations. I actually am not writing them in standard form here. We probably should. Um, I will write the output equation, however, in standard form. The output is just going to be, if you can remember, the output is whatever comes out of R3. Now, it's kind of hard to access that if we are thinking of, OK, well, it's QR3 that we care about. But we don't have QR3 as one of our state variables. But we do have QI1 and QI2, which add up to be QR3. So we could go through our equations to show us that, or we could just recognize it. It comes down to essentially this equation here. So we have this continuity equation that says that QR3, which is what we want to know for our output, is just equal to the sum of QI1 and QI2, which are our state, which are two of our state variables. So let's write that y equals it's a single output, so it's a one by, and then we have zero, zero to zero out the first two state variables, and then a one and a one because we're summing up the latter two state variables, the latter two state variables being qi1 and qi2. So 0 times this, 0 times that, plus one of these and one of those gives us the output flow, which is what we want. And our D matrix, we have two inputs and one output. So we want to 0 out both of these inputs in our output equation. And we have none, neither of those flows, q1 or q2, enter the output equation. So that's that. C and D matrices, our A matrix would be a four by four, and our B matrix would be a four by two. Okay? So leave that part as an exercise for you to um, write the standard form, but it's just the way that we've always been doing it. Um, yeah, so enjoy, and yeah, have a good President's Day. All right, take care.